Hello Year 2, this is Miss Louise. Welcome back to our lesson. This week we're going to look at a different famous person. We're going to look at King Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun is one of Egypt's most famous pharaohs. To understand him and his life, we need to go back three and a half thousand years, when Egypt was very different to how it is today. Today we see Egypt built up. Cars, buildings, traffic, people, very, very busy. Nothing like the Egypt that King Tutankhamun would have known. Life in Egypt exists because of the River Nile. Life in ancient Egypt, and today, centred on the Nile, which gave water for growing food, for drinking and for transportation. In fact, the Egyptian calendar of three seasons was based on the yearly cycle of the Nile. The Egyptian year began in July, when the floods came. Roads could not be built on sandy desert or in places that flooded every year. So the Nile was the main road of ancient Egypt. Travelling on the Nile was easy. Going north, boats just drifted with the flow of the river. Because prevailing winds blew south, boats travelling in that direction were aided. Each year the Nile flooded, spreading rich soil across the land. Without this annual flooding, the Egyptians could not have grown plentiful crops in the desert. The Nile is the mother of Egypt. Now let's take a quick look at life along the Nile three and a half thousand years ago. All kinds of goods, cattle, grain, bales of linen cloth and fruit were sent up and down the Nile on large cargo boats. Boats often had sterns shaped like lotus flowers a very famous flower from Egypt. Many animals were used along the Nile within farming. They found the simplest way to separate grain from wheat stem was to get animals to trample it out, as we can see in the picture. Papyrus plants grew in marshy places along the river. Paper was made from papyrus. Boats made up bundles of papyrus lashed together were seen travelling up and down the Nile frequently. Everything in ancient Egypt centred around the Nile and the life that it gave to the people. Going as far as the pharaoh himself, he would be judged on the annual floods of the Nile. If the Nile didn't flood, that would mean he was a very bad pharaoh. This is Tutankhamun's world. So, who were the pharaohs? The world's first known national government was formed in ancient Egypt when Nama united Upper and Lower Egypt around 5,300 years ago. Nama is now considered to be Egypt's first pharaoh, another word for king or ruler. He started the first dynasty, which is a group of rulers from the same family. Ancient Egypt had 31 dynasties, during which over 200 pharaohs reigned, one after the other. Some dynasties lasted for a long time, and others were fairly short. Tutankhamun belonged to the 18th dynasty. Pharaohs were not elected by the people. They inherited their position. Pharaohs often had more than one wife, and the oldest son of the chief wife would become the next pharaoh. Today, the word pharaoh refers to all the rulers of ancient Egypt. However, for much of their history, the Egyptians did not call their kings pharaohs. The word did not come into use in Egypt until the 18th dynasty. That's when King Tutankhamun ruled. The government and religion were very closely connected. Egyptians believed that the pharaohs were the all-powerful gods on earth. Pharaohs were the supreme rulers who issued laws, ran the army, 
managed the economy and generally handled all other aspects of Egyptian society. The pharaoh relied on advisers to help run the country. The priests took care of the country's important religious needs and high-ranking officials called viziers and the overseers assisted the pharaoh in running the government. Religion was found in every aspect of ancient Egyptian society, including government, science and art. Egyptians worshipped many deities, that means gods and goddesses. They believed that deities were responsible for every action in the world, big and small, from the sunrise to a simple sneeze. However, ancient Egyptians did not call their beliefs in deities a religion. To them, the gods were simply part of everyday life and a force of nature. On a daily basis, people showed respect to the gods and asked them for help and feared them. Egyptians had different types of gods and there were many stories about each god. Some were worshipped throughout all of Egypt, such as the sun god named Ra or the Aten. Others were only known to a single place. Many gods and goddesses were depicted as a human with the head of an animal. Egyptian deities were not a set group that never changed. Some pharaohs favoured certain gods. Throughout the long history of ancient Egypt, deities came and went depending on what the pharaoh of the time wanted. Sometimes more than one god was merged to form a new god. One pharaoh, Echinaten, who we'll look at later, tried to convince the Egyptians to worship only one god instead of many. And his idea didn't last very long which we'll see in a moment. Although pharaohs were human beings, the people considered them gods. Pharaohs built extravagant temples to honour themselves and the gods. Egyptians believed that the spirit of their deity lived in these temples. The temples were the centre of each community. They contained sanctuaries with statues of the gods and goddesses, but only the pharaoh and high priests could enter them. Therefore, most other people prayed at home. Festivals were held to praise the gods and goddesses, especially during the flood season when the farms were not able to work in the fields. Egyptians looked forward to a life after death, or the afterlife. They believed they would continue to live after they died, but in a different way than before. Because people wanted to enjoy the afterlife, they spent a great deal of time preparing their tombs for that purpose. If possible, they were buried with the comforts of life such as food, clothes, furniture, jewellery and household items so they could use them in the afterlife. Bodies were mummified, which means they preserved using special treatments and chemicals so that people could use their bodies in the afterlife. The process of making a mummy is called embalming. The embalmers did such a good job and Egypt's climate is so dry that many mummies have survived today. Now let's take a look at Tutankhamun, also known as the Boy King. Tutankhamun was only eight or nine years old when he became pharaoh in the 18th dynasty. King Tutankhamun was a very good student, but was in very delicate health. He enjoyed riding, archery, swimming, hunting, much more than rule in his kingdom. Tutankhamun had two high officials who ruled with him. They were I, his uncle, and Horemheb, the commander-in-chief of the army. To make him appear older and wiser, his advisers had him marry when he became pharaoh. He died around the age of 18 to 21. Because of his young age and short reign, Tutankhamun was a relatively unimportant pharaoh. He is well known today because of the treasures found in his tomb, which was discovered undamaged in 1922 in the Valley of the Kings. In our next lesson, we will look in more detail about King Tutankhamun himself. Today we focus on the world around King Tutankhamun. 
because as I said, to understand the Pharaoh, we need to understand his world. In our next lesson, we will look at the famous Echenaten, who is Tutankhamun's father, a pharaoh unlike any other pharaoh, and his queen Nefertiti. The question, was it Tutankhamun's mother or not? And we will look at the Aten, all of which played a huge role in Tutankhamun's childhood. I hope you enjoyed the lesson year two and you've learned some fantastic things about your amazing country and its history. Next lesson, we're going to look at some fabulous pharaohs and what they did for your beautiful country. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.